Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. In this video, I'm going to talk about central banking and how they make it so that, um, you know, like prices essentially are stable. Now, if you don't know about World War II or something like that, um, you, you probably don't understand exactly how much the dollar sort of dominates the world right now. Uh, but towards the end of World War II, there was, a, there was a little known agreement called the Bretton Woods Agreement, which essentially substituted the US dollar for gold that were in central banks. Now, that made it so that the dollar was the premier currency all over the world. And, um, you know, it, it was sort of like the gold standard, but not exactly, because there were governments that were printing way more than uh, the reserves that they had and so on. Um, and essentially, it got to the point where the U.S. had to get off the gold standard because there, were, uh, uh, there was too much of an outflow of gold. So Nixon cut off the gold standard in 1971. And the U.S. switched to the petrodollar, and that's essentially been the international unit of settlement ever since. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that whenever there's foreign trade, people settle in U.S. dollars, because even if you are neighboring countries, it's hard to get like a pair trading like that, right? Like uh, Kenya and Nigeria are ni right next to each other. Uh, but not many people want to trade, you know, want to hold um the Kenyan shilling or the Nigerian naira. So um, they settle in dollars. They convert their currency to dollars and then trade uh, internationally for that. Now, what that means is that there's this um, giant, uh, you know, hegemo hegemony of dollars. And every since everything's priced in dollars, that becomes the world unit of account. And essentially, everybody else other than the U.S. has to um, keep some stability with respect to the dollar. And that's uh, that's one of the functions that uh, that central banks essentially do is uh, because of trade and so on, because uh, the dollar is the international unit of settlement at this point. What, what you need to do is if your country produces goods that other countries want, you need to be able to price it in dollars. But the costs are, of course, in the local currency. And, you know, um, the central banks or the governments want to make sure that, uh, you know, the citizens are using that because then they can sort of control some of the levers of the economy and so on. So what, what central banks end up doing is they, they try to keep some sort of a peg to the dollar. They, they try to keep their currency within a particular range of, uh, of the dollar. So it might be, you know, like six rubles per dollar, somewhere between five and seven rubles per dollar or something like that. Or, you know, if you're a euro, you know, you, you try to keep it w within like a reasonable percentage. Because, you know, your costs are in euro and you want to make sure you can sell in dollars um, because that's what's used uh, all over the world and so on. The yen does the same thing to the dollar and the central banks, the European Central Bank, the Japanese Central Bank, um, they have to make sure that that happens. Now, there, there's natural volatility when when all of that happens. Um, yeah, I mean, just just in foreign exchange markets and so on, there's, uh, you know, like uh, somebody might be trying to sell a lot of one currency for another and so on. Uh, so there's uh, some natural volatility. And what central banks do is they, they try to, you know, sort of dampen that volatility. Now, most of the time, people don't complain that much when uh, when it's in their favor. It's it's really when it's dropping. And, um, uh, you know, that that that's what uh, that's what central banks are doing is uh, they, they take away some of the downside at the expense of some of the upside. And that's that's essentially what's been happening. Uh, but the way they do that is by using their reserves. So um, they need a large if they're going to be pegged to the dollar, they need a large reserve of dollars. And this is where a lot of dollars have been going. And when uh, when the Japanese central bank wants to. Uh, prop up the yen because it's uh, inflating against the dollar, um, they buy more dollars uh, with their yen. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, that, that way um, there's more, uh, more demand. Uh, well, they're, they're done, they essentially, when, when they want, the, want to lower the rate, right? So more yen to the dollar, they... Um, use the yen to buy more reserves of the dollar. When they want to make the yen higher against the dollar, they sell the reserve dollars uh, for, for yen on the market. And th this is 
essentially one of the big functions of a central bank is to manage that peg. It's to manage that price volatility. And not surprisingly, this is one of the big complaints of Bitcoin, right? It's like, oh, it's not price stable with respect to the dollar. Yeah, duh, there's no central bank in Bitcoin. This, uh, th this is the big thing that a lot of people don't get, is that most of these currencies that exist in the world today, they are managed by a central bank. So the, the rates uh, you know, of exchange between currencies and so on are done so, uh, like they're they're managed by central banks to be within a certain range. So when you don't have a central bank, that volatility, the natural volatility that's there all along um, can't, it isn't managed, right? Like it, it, it fluctuates a lot more. And that's, that's actually probably evidence that uh, central banks are constantly working to make, make that happen. Now, there, there are some theories that, you know, as the market gets bigger and so on, that the volatility will dampen, um, you know, in, in some mathematical formula or something like that. But we don't really know. Uh, because I, essentially with fiat currencies, you, you have uh, this, this natural volatility that, that continues to happen and they're managed essentially by the central banks. But because Bitcoin doesn't have that volatility or uh, that central bank, it has a lot of volatility. But at the same time, that all, it, it also has a fixed supply. So, uh, and the reason it doesn't have a central bank is because it's decentralized and that that's what gives it value that's what gives it the upside so the volatility and um and the upside kind of go hand in hand and you can't you you either have both or neither what people want is the upside without the volatility and and such an asset just does not exist it it, it simply doesn't so um that's unfortunately how things have to be. And that's, uh, that's uh, you know, like uh, um, not something that you can solve solve with technology. It's, it's just sort of like a metaphysical thing, right? Like it's, uh, it, it's something that, um, that you get uh, along with, uh, like as part of the upside, you, you have to take the volatility. Anyway, hope that helps you. This song is done.